Welcome back. I'm Dr. Rich. Today, we're going to review an episode of the new hit series, The Resident. My team said there's something in this video that's so shocking and unbelievable, they asked me to review it to see if this could actually happen. I'm 85% sure I have cancer. The number of people who walk in here thinking they have cancer versus the number of people who actually do. Not cancer. Oh, thank God. Bike accident did more damage than you thought. You have an atrophied testicle. So this guy comes in, he thinks he has cancer, uh, he's got pain in the groin area. There is a balance between being a hypochondriac and having a healthy appreciation of your body and concern that there's something going wrong that you need to go see the doctor to find out what's up. So the main character comes in and says that he's got an atrophied testicle from a bike accident. So most likely this happens when the testicle twists and cuts off its own blood supply. Now in my specialty, the same thing can happen with ovaries. An ovary can twist and cut off its own blood supply. It's called ovarian torsion, usually because there's a big cyst. So this is a risk factor. If you notice pain, don't ignore it. Go see your doctor. Oh, well, that doesn't sound good. Will it just heal by itself? With this degree of atrophy and your continued pain, the recommended treatment is um, removal. Chopping my ball off? Oh, come on, come on, guys. Will we still be able to have kids? So, and this is also a good point. The good Lord designed us with a lot of uh, duplication so you can give your friend a kidney. Your body wouldn't know the difference. You can lose an ovary, you can lose a testicle. As long as the other one is healthy, it has really no impact on your absolute fertility rates. Now, the only downside is you no longer have a spare. So if something happens to the remaining ovary or testicle, then you're out of luck. Impressive, right? Yeah. It has a thin silicone elastomer shell. Groovy. So, doctor, will Ed's package look the same or? Exactly the same. Well, not if I choose this one here. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> <A> Easter. <laughs> it might actually throw off your anatomical balance. You know, I have an idea. Why don't I just get like a triple D implant, but only in my right boob? That way we'd always be moving towards each other. That actually brings up another point. So once you get some kind of cosmetic surgery and probably the best example of this is is a breast implant or a, a bbl you're kind of stuck with that going forward so you do want to have a lot of thought that goes into how big is big enough and how big is too big and of course all implants can be exchanged but not without another major surgical episode edward brooks date of birth 8 13 82. agree attending dr randolph bell yes here for a left orchiectomy, no known allergies. Everyone agree? Correct. Correct. Timeout has concluded. Dr. Okafer, you may proceed. So I want to take a second here to talk about this. Uh, what they're doing here is called a surgical timeout. So this is a very important and critical part of the surgical culture. During the surgical timeout, there is an absolute pause in the OR. All of the movement is stopped. The anesthesiologist, the surgeon, the circulating nurse, the scrub tech all have to identify themselves. Uh, the patient's identified, the surgery's identified, and this is to ensure that, you know, everything proceeds according to plan. Change this dumb music. Oh. You picked this because I'm black? Picked it because it's awesome. So in every OR, uh, you gotta pick the DJ. Typically that's the doctor, uh, selects the type of music they wanna listen to. I kinda give my team free reign. You have to keep the volume at a point where everybody can communicate. There you go. Son of a bitch! Oh my god. Oh. Sharon, get Dr. Okafor. Yes, doctor. Just keep it coming, more like Get some suction in there, it's allowed. Can't see a damn thing. Where the hell's meet up? Well, that looks awful, but uh, surgical complications can occur. Vascular complications are the most urgent and life-threatening because uh, any other injury to any other organ can be fixed on your own time schedule. But with acute blood loss, it has to be fixed now. Do you need to call for backup? You need to call for somebody to help, and that's you know appropriately what this guy did here. Bradley's passed out. York's crashing. Bell needs you. The vitals are stable. Go. Now, in the course of elective surgery, it would be extremely rare that a surgeon would actually have to leave the surgery that they're doing to go help another surgeon with a case. In virtually all cases, the surgeon would complete what they're doing 
and make sure that patient is safe before going to another OR to help another surgeon. The one probable exception to that is some kind of mass casualty circumstance, a big motor vehicle pile up on a highway where there are multiple victims coming at the same time. Shall I extubate Ed? Is he stable? Yes. Well, he's not priority. Put more quarters in the gas machine. Have him put a Foley in. Then get back there with Christine. I need about 30 minutes to make headway with Christine. Place the Foley for Ed and we prep in about 20. Once Bella Jude comes in, I'll scrub out and finish here. Should we do another timeout? No, he's been under too long. Let's get this over with. 15 blade. Christine's pressure dropped and we can't get it back up, even with the blood transfusion. Wow, that's exciting. So I'm getting kind of palpitations just watching that. In this circumstance, you really wouldn't have the attending doctor in another room performing another surgery and a resident by themselves. So a doctor in training. Um, in most institutions, if not all, there's safeguards that the attending surgeon doesn't have to actually be in the OR the entire time, but they have to be immediately available. So I think this is a little, bit dramatized for TV. A patient in his early 30s, scheduled for a routine surgery, the removal of an atrophy testicle, only to have the healthy one excised. Oh. All right, so now this takes a pretty diabolical twist here. So they removed the wrong one. So, so this brings up a whole other issue of wrong-sided surgery, which is considered a never event. You should never go in as a patient expecting to have surgery on your right leg, only to have surgery on your left leg or your right brain and have surgery on your left brain. Now, unfortunately, wrong-sided surgeries actually do occur. The rate is about one in 100,000 surgeries, but with 40 to 50 million surgeries going on in the US every year, that's about 500 wrong-sided surgeries per year in, in America. Now, there's a governing body that monitors hospitals called the Joint Commission, and they have put together a series of safeguards and protocols uh, one of which we mentioned earlier, which is the surgical timeout. So prior to surgery, there's a pre-surgical prep where all of that information is discussed, the patient, two identifiers, the site of the surgery, and then the affected or the abnormal leg is then marked so that the surgeon when they go into the OR, you know, that's the reminder. This is the leg or the foot or the side of the head that you're supposed to operate on. So pre-procedurally, the site is marked. Intraoperatively, there's an all stop that happens in the OR after the, typically after patients have been put to sleep and prepped and draped, where again, patients identified, the site is identified, and this is in reference to wrong site surgery. There's also wrong patient surgery. So sometimes there's a lineup and the surgeon comes in and he does the entirely wrong surgery on a patient. In fact, that was a recent surgical misadventure that made the headlines where a surgeon went in to operate, I believe on the spleen and then ended up taking out the liver. And of course, you know, you need a liver to survive. And uh, man, if you went through medical school residency training to be a surgeon, you ought to know the difference between the spleen and a, and a liver. Not least of which because the liver's on the right and the spleen's on the left side of the body. I should have double checked. No, it was my responsibility. I asked Nurse Moore to reprep the surgical field. When she sanitized the surgical area, the incision mark was removed. Oh, uh, okay. When I returned to OR1, Nurse Moore asked if we should do another timeout. I said no. He'd been under too long. So in this case, the three main reasons that uh, wrong-sided surgeries occur are communication failures, failure of leadership, and procedural noncompliance. The risk factors are emergency cases, multiple surgeons, the pressure of, of time, uh, unusual equipment or setup, room changes, obesity and deformities. As a patient, if you are having surgery on a duplicate organ, two sides of the brain, lungs, kidneys, gonads, limbs, hands, feet, make sure you discuss with your surgeon ahead of time. They should be marking the side that they're supposed to be operating on. So as a patient, if your hospital is completely chaotic, don't be afraid to speak up and reschedule if you have an elective case.